In this video, I'll be going over t distribution, specifically the one sample test. I'll have other videos that go over the Welsh's t test as well as the unpaired and paired sample tests. The first thing I'd like to go over is that the t distribution is a variation of the normal distribution. The t distribution accounts for the variance that a small sample may bring with it. Uh, and that's in understanding the central limit theorem and other aspects of statistics. But this is where it comes from. So if you're going to have a small sample size, which is typically 30, you use the t-distribution. If it's over 30, it'd be considered a large sample size and you use the normal distribution. This is actually where the rule of 30 comes from. It's the understanding from the t-distribution to the normal distribution. Some key elements to know are your mean comparison for your hypothesis, so what your hypothesis is comparing itself to. The alpha, which is the reverse of the confidence interval, so if you're looking at a 95% confidence interval, your alpha is 0.05. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1, or the sample size minus 1. This is to help with the variation aspect of the t distribution and a small sample size, and we'll go over that later. One or two-tailed tests. So from your hypothesis, you'll know whether to use a one- or two-tailed test. And then your t-distribution table is where you apply the one- or two-tailed test and come to your conclusion with what your test is. So let's get into just how this goes. The first thing you do is you get a hypothesis. In this case, I'm doing a null hypothesis of mu equals mu naught and an alternative of mu does not equal mu naught. Don't worry, we'll go, in, uh, we'll go over an example with numbers. It's just I want to make sure that we go over the process first and then we go and use numbers to apply. So the next step is to actually calculate the test statistic. You're going to need to know how to do a sample mean and do a sample standard deviation. And if you don't know how to do that, here are some videos for you to know how to do that. So please go and check those videos out if you need help with understanding a sample mean or a sample standard deviation. The next is to choose an alpha, which is usually 5%. So 95% confidence interval gives you a 5% alpha uh, or a 0 0.05. The next is to calculate the t-statistic itself. And so you have the sample mean minus the mu equals the standard deviation over the square root of n. And n is your sample size. The degrees of freedom is n minus 1. The next thing we're going to go into is the critical value and rejection regions. So the formula here is how you get the rejection regions. We have the sample mean plus or minus the critical value times the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. The critical value uses both the degrees of freedom there, you can see the n minus 1, and then you've got the comma alpha divided by 2, and then 1 minus alpha divided by 2. What that is saying is it's a two-tailed critical value. We know this is a two-tailed test because the hypothesis is equal, not equal. If it was greater than or less than, then it would be a one-tailed test. So I have here a sample of newborn birth weights, and they're in kilograms. We have 10 of them, and we're going to use this sample for going through the process we just did. This is what a hypothesis looks like when you have an actual number that you're comparing with mu. The null hypothesis is that mu equals 3.5 kilograms. The alternative is that mu does not equal 3.5 kilograms. When it comes to calculating the test statistics for the steps, we know that the sample mean is 3.3 and the standard deviation is 0.851. The alpha is 0.05 or 5%. And from the calculation that we have, we have t equals 3.3 minus the 3.5 that we have in our hypothesis, divided by 0 0.851, which is the standard deviation, divided by the square root of 10, 10 being the sample size. And this equals negative 0.743. We understand that the degrees of freedom are 10 minus 1, so that equals 9. And now we have to apply all this information to getting the critical value. This is the t-table. Uh, if you're in a class, you've probably already seen this. But on the left-hand side, you have the degrees of freedom. And on the top, depending on whether it's a one-tail or two-tail test, 
you have the alphas that are associated with both of those tests. We're using a two-tailed test, so we know that we're going to be using the two-tailed uh, numbering. So this is the column that we're going to be using, given that we're using an alpha of 0 0.05. We know that degrees of freedom is 9, so that's where the, the 9 is located, and now we just have to find the intersection. And as you can see, the number that we've come up with is 2.262. That is our critical value. Now that we have our critical value, we're going to get our rejection regions. We have the sample mean, 3.3, plus or minus the critical value times the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So in terms of the numbers, when we have all that information, you have 3.3 plus or minus 2.262 times 0 0.269, which yields 3.3 plus or minus 0 0.61 which gives you a range of 2.69 to 3.91. If 3.5 is in between that range, we don't reject the null hypothesis. If it's not within that range, we reject the null hypothesis. And so we know that between 2.69 and 3.91, 3.5 is in between there, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now there's another way of understanding how to apply this, and this deals with the t-statistic itself. So instead of going to the critical value, you're looking at what you got from the t-test. The and because you're probably asking, well, what do, would we get that for if we're not going to use it? And that's a very good question. This is how you would use it. You take the t-value. You know it's negative 0.743. Now the question is, with the critical value that it's re related to, that is with degrees of freedom 9 and a two-tailed test, does it cover between negative 2.262 and 2.262? That is to say, is it within that range or not? And just like, like above, the answer is that it falls between that range, which means we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So that's a way of validating what you found because uh, depending on what class you're taking you may care about the critical value region you may not in almost all cases you're going to care about what's where the t value that you calculated is compared to the critical value that's related to the degrees of freedom and whether it's a one or two tailed test that's going to matter so hopefully this has been helpful uh, if you have any questions please leave them in the comments section and uh Stay nerdy, my friends.